my connection what's going on everyone just want to give a quick update on two things one how my winter garden is going and then two how am I preparing for winter it's a little bit cold this afternoon got out here after work and um, decided to hurry up and try to finish my video for the week I got a couple of messages uh, instant mess or direct messages about giving the update for the week. I am posting this in other garden groups too, so uh, just if you're in those groups, hello everyone. Uh, to give you an update on the garden, the first thing I'm gonna do is just kinda show you some of the areas. I didn't get a chance to go through everything last time, but Swiss char is doing good. The onions, which are here, are doing pretty good. I have some rainbow char that's growing over there in the corner. And it looks like everything is getting a little bit dry. So let me flip the camera and uh, show you this here. So these are the cabbages. And I have red cabbage that's over here. And they're doing really good. Some more Swiss chard. Then I have some curly kale. And that's Swiss chard that's behind it right there. Over here is dinosaur kale. So now I get a chance to eat uh, and start harvesting some of this. So I'm gonna really uh, change my meal plan and eat what's in my garden. Maybe just eat only that for 30 days, which you all think, I don't know. I may do that, may not. And then here I have some cauliflowers. It's really like five or six of them, five of them that I have, well six, counting that little itty bitty one. Um, cabbage is not, the cauliflower is not growing fast as I thought, it's growing. But if you have any advice on how to make sure that it's growing, please let me know. Don't know how and what's going on. Here's the arugula. So when I make a salad, I can throw some arugula in there with the salad, have that nice peppery flavor. This is the spinach. If you have some advice on spinach, I'm still a beginner when it comes to some of these. Uh, spinach is not growing as fast, but you know, I still can start harvesting and do a cut and come again method, of course, with that. Then that's the beets that are there. Those are my little handy dandy clippers. So when I do cut some of this lettuce that you see here, this is the romaine lettuce and they're starting to form the head. So that's pretty cool. I can start cutting. Uh, I can do the cut and come again method or I can, which, which means just taking some of the leaves and eat the leaves and do like a mixed salad or I can just cut, let it form a head, and I can cut the whole plant. And the advantage of the cut and come again is I can cut it, I can eat, and then I can later see that some more leaves has grown, and I can cut it again. So cut and come again. Uh, I am gonna start eating a lot of this salad here. So this behind it, you may see, uh, after the romaine here, you'll see that we have some uh, red romaine so that's going to be cool over there to the left is red russian kale so i have all my kales over here and that's what i like to do is just kind of nibble on those and kind of make some salads um and even add it to you know saute uh and add it to smoothies over here is the baby um uh, uh i forgot which ones these are I think there's butter crunch, sorry. But these are the butter crunch lettuces. So this is kind of like the standard for my salad. So that's why I have way more of this than some of the others. And Ralph is over there running through the, the garden. Got to keep an eye on him. Um, and also speaking of just the garden in general, what I am going to start doing is doing some more decorative work. Really, I've just been focused on making sure that I have the plants and the, the beds in, but I'm gonna do some lining, start organizing my chip pile, which is for whenever I wanna cover the plants in the summer. So really I'm just planning for the, I'm doing the winter stuff, but I'm also, Ralph, what are you doing? Ralph, so I gotta get him out of here. Ralph, come on, there you go, come on. Oh, you're messing up the fly. Oh, look at that. Look at the damage that he just caused. So this is another reason why I keep the gate locked. So Ralph can't do stuff like that. He likes to get right in the middle 
of the the, the lettuce and just sit. And uh, I caught him doing that once before. And now every chance he gets, he does it. So aren't you guilty, Ralph? Ralph, are you guilty? All right, now he's wondering if he's in trouble. But yet, every time I take a step away, he's right behind me. But I actually had some strawberries. And I've been eating some of them. I had some guests that came by this weekend, and I pulled some of them. But some of them I didn't get to, and that's why they have uh, spoiled. So I'm going to take some of these and put these in the house. Really nice uh, strawberries. So I can use that if I make a smoothie. Um, and a lot, out of a lot of the fruit, strawberries are really healthy. So I can take these and actually mix it with some of the red Russian kale or some of the um, uh, dinosaur kale that's here. So they really go hand in hand. So that would be really cool. One thing I do want to update you on is the sugar snap peas. Now, all I do is come out here and make sure that I take um, them and guide them. So every time I come out here and I see one of these, I forgot what these are called, but if anybody know, leave a comment. But basically, I weave it into the fence so that it grows up the fence. And you have to do it gently because it will break. Uh, sugar snap are very fragile plants. Here go another one. And I've done it before when it was uh, very small and, and broke some of them. So, But they look like they're progressing. They're growing. And hopefully this is a part of the design that I'm trying to do in the garden. Is have it where it grows up. And Ralph is definitely interested in what we're talking about but it grows up the trellis. And when I come out here and start picking them, I can just stand and I can just grab them and pick them. So that would be the idea. And I have them arching so that when I start growing things that are vines or beans or whatever, I can grow up the vines both ways. And it looks pretty cool. So that's for Eliela, my wife, uh, wife, uh, really wants me to start organizing things out here. So I'm going to dedicate this video to her. So I have that commitment that I can start organizing the rest of the backyard here. And, uh, you know, add some aesthetics to it. So that's the whole goal is to make sure that this is a place that I can come and relax. But she has to be able to come out here and relax as well. These are more butter crunch, but I'm going to let these form heads. So the other ones that are over there, I'm going to do the cut and come again. But with these, I'm going to just let them form into heads. And now the second bed, I had some peas here. And if you can help me, these are long peas, I believe, or black pole beans. The problem is they just didn't grow and they died. But I have some some pods that are on here maybe what i should have done is taken off these pods early because once they start producing these pods i notice they stop focus on growing and they start pushing all their energies toward making these uh peas they taste really good i ate some of these last week um and you can chop them up and put them into your salad as well but i think overall that one is a failure so if you all have any advice let me know there's a nice looking strawberry over there that I might need to go and grab. But if you all have some advice, leave me a comment. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Another thing that I may be doing wrong is I have not labeled what these plants are. These are some type of greens. I think they're a mustard, a version of mustard green. But it seems like they're already bolting if this is a green. Um, it's already bolting. So what I may do is just kind of take this and put it into my salad. And mustard greens, you can take these, and they taste really good. You can take that and uh, make it a part of your salad. There's edible flowers that grow off of these, so you can take the leaves as well as the flowers. And it adds a little bit of spice. So those are, are really nice. I'm really seeing some strawberries over here, so I better grab them. Oh, yeah. This one is another strawberry. And I'm going to put that in the till. It's good to 
do these walks through the gardens. I haven't been able to come out here as, as consistent, but it's good to do those walks and come out here and grab these little treats. Nature's candy. Collard greens are doing really good. So going to definitely start harvesting some of those and eat. Um, I think I have enough that is sustainable that I can actually eat um, a lot of these and not have to go to the store. What if I do a 30 day challenge of just eating solely what's in the garden? I wonder what that would do to my health. So I may do that, that challenge. Leave a comment if you want me to do that challenge. And here is a uh, grand prize, or I'm sorry, grand rapids. So these are uh, lettuce that's growing and I'm gonna start harvesting that as well. And I can do a lot of cut and come again with that. So uh, that's gonna be cool. Then next to it, we have broad leaf um, cabbage. Well, there's a little kohlrabi that's in there, that purple. So there's some kohlrabi growing there. I also have some kohlrabi over here. Just had some extra kohlrabi, so I threw it down. Kohlrabi is really good. It tastes like the stem of a broccoli. So I'm gonna put it there for now, let them grow, maybe harvest them, and they'll be under this other trellis. Oh, look at the, the sun set, nice. But this is gonna be growing on the, um, when I add during the winter, I mean the spring, I'm gonna have stuff that's growing up here, maybe uh, things like uh, zucchini, I mean cucumbers. Uh, I'm gonna have a lot of cucumbers on this trellis here. So that's, you know, I may just leave that there and uh, throw that in the compost and then start with some cucumbers and let them grow prolifically. So broad leaf, this is broad leaf uh, uh, mustard greens. No, I think these are the broadleaf mustard greens. Again, one tip is to make sure you put your labels down. Uh, I planted these and I had the labels on my little uh, popsicle stick, but you know, after it rained, it's gone. So I can't memorize what it is. I'll look it up later. If anybody can identify any of these, it is a mustard for sure. But if you can guess the name, you may win a prize from me. I may give you something, I don't know. <laughs> so these are broad leaves though. And I know that for sure. And the broad leaves are really uh, ready to start harvesting. So I can start picking some of those leaves and cook them as mustard greens. So I'm really excited about that. Over here, you see some small plants that are there. I'll go over those some other time. Those are more lettuces, uh, red salad lettuce. I need to really plant some more. These are what I'm really excited about. So these items that are going across here, these are the tree collards. So these are supposed to grow really tall. And then I got some more kohlrabi that is there. Just had a lot of extra kohlrabi that I, I seeded and uh, that's the way it's going. So. That's really the update on the garden. So I am gonna work on making sure that I add more aesthetics. And these strawberries are still producing flowers. Look at that. And whenever the strawberry produce flowers, that means that it is potential fruit. So I'm excited about that. But I'm gonna work on the aesthetics and just make sure that the garden start looking good. I think we got, you know, my tools everywhere, make a pathway, got tools that I organized on the fence. So I need to start working on that. Lemon tree is doing pretty good. Need to take some of those, the lemons off. If anybody want to come by and help with that, you can see that the tree is kind of bowing over because I'm not, I guess I'm just lazy. I don't feel like grabbing all those lemons, but I am grabbing them when I'm, I'm about to cook something. But that is most of the items that are in the garden. I'll be updating you and letting you know more uh, in the future. These are the leeks that are here. And I think it'll be a good time to go into uh uh, uh Make sure that in the 
end of the winter that you're getting ready for the spring. So as you begin to get ready for the spring, it's imperative to make sure, it's starting to get dark out here, but it's imperative to make sure you list what you want to grow. Come on, Ralph. There you go, Ralph. List down what you want to grow and then kind of plan it out. And I use tools to help me plan what I want to do. But seed starting is very important. If you get a packet of seeds, now is the time to start ordering the seeds. And when you order the seeds, maybe you'll get them. You have this thing called the frost date. And if you try to hurry up and order them now, you'll have your seeds, you'll have all your supplies by the frost date. So I'm gonna go into the garage here and go over some of the supplies that I have. So it's a little bit more light out here. First thing I do wanna show you is you need seed trays. And the reason why I do it indoors is to make sure that it is, uh, you know, ready by the spring. So I plant some of them indoors. Here's, man, tripped. <laughs> Here's some of the, the uh, starter mix that I have. And I already put some uh, soil in it, which is the seed start sort of soil mix. And really, this is just soil mix. Let me show you that. Here's the bag that I use. This is just some Jiffy um, organic seed start mix. And basically what they did is just sterilize some soil and they gave it to us in a package. Let me turn this camera around. So the way that I do this is basically I have all the seeds that I want to do for the spring. I'm not doing things that are heavy, um, that grow fast, such as squash and zucchini. But what you should look at on all your seed packs is what is called uh, how many weeks before the frost date. So uh, depending on what zone you live in, you'll know the last frost date for your winter. So the best thing to do is just go ahead uh, kind of mark it on the calendar of uh, how many weeks that it's going to take for some of these uh, plants to grow. And again, I'm thinking about the summer. And the summer is like when you get into tomatoes, peppers, jalapenos, squash, zucchini, um, all kind of uh, uh, cucumbers. Those are plants that grow uh, in watermelon. They all grow prolifically in the summer. So you can't plant a seed outside of season. So it's important to make sure that you look at the, uh, the time period or how many weeks it takes for them to generate. So what I'm gonna do is just go through some of the things that I do. I do order some of my seeds. Some of them are just from the store and some of them are just uh, from online. Uh, if you ever get a chance, I don't know. I wanna give a shout out to uh, the rusticgarden.com. So there's Gary that is over there. He's really good, been following him and learning a lot from his channel on YouTube. And it inspired me to do that. Actually, I got the trays from him too. You can buy all these supplies from him, but uh, once you get those seeds, you can go ahead and make sure that you have these trays. So let me show you the tray that is here. You can see that I have these little seed trays, I put soil in them, and then I put them in another tray. And these are the trays that are here. I don't know if you can see it. So this is an example of the tray that they go in. So whenever I put the seed in, I put it in the tray like that. And that is under these lights. Now these lights I got from Home Depot, um, or Lowe's very cheap lights but they're plant lights they have the red and blue light which helps your seeds to germinate and also do heat pads uh, I have my heat pad excuse me over here I'm gonna roll this heat pad out and you can lay it underneath the tray so for warm weather crops if you have one of these you can put it under even though it's still cold outside of here It'll keep these plants warm. I'm going to do that after they germinate. Don't have to do it now. just want to get it to the point where uh, I go ahead and plant some of my summer uh, uh, spring garden 
Um, so what I'm going to start with today, and this is the last tool that I use, but what I'm going to start with, I don't know if you can see that, but this is a popsicle stick. So I write on the popsicle stick the name of the seed or the name of the plant and the date. So you can see it's February 3rd. So I'm going to do onions and I'm going to do uh, cilantro or red salad lettuce. Then I'm going to go ahead and do some other ones. So some thyme. Mainly I'm focused on a lot of herbs now because herbs take a long time to germinate. So I'm going to do a couple and show you how I do it. So if you have any questions about anything of what I'm planting or anything that you want me to plant, let me know. If you want to grow a garden with me, please let me know. Share your video. I can look at it. I watch a lot of people's videos turning into a garden nerd. So let me set this up here. Set my camera up. So sorry about that. But I want to make sure you're able to see it. All right, and free my hands up. So what I do with these is make sure that I seed them and then afterwards what I'll do is make sure that I thin them out. So in each one of these compartments, I'll put a few seeds in it and then afterwards I will thin them out. So I'll take my seeds and I'm gonna start with the onion seeds and onion seeds are very tiny, very small like that. I don't know if you can see it clear. Seems like my focus isn't working. In the future, maybe I'll get a better camera. But I'm just starting on my phone. Um, and what I do is just put like two, three in each, each one of them. And actually with onions, you can just throw a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw, cause I'm gonna, onions are very tough. So when onions, even after they grow, you don't really have to thin them out. You can just separate them and put them into the garden. So I'm gonna actually overseed these and I don't have to thin these out. Now thinning means uh, for some plants, you can't have too many plants growing together because their root system will just not allow the plant to grow. It'll start dwarfing, so it won't uh, continue to grow. But with some plants, you can overseed. You can just throw a lot of seeds in there and you should be good. Sorry, I hit the camera here. Maybe I can tighten up my camera operations in the future, but I got some onions and these are the seeds that are in here. I have my label here. Hey Yolanda, how you doing? Got my cousin on. So I got my, and sorry about the, uh, the laundry is going in the background. I'm in the garage, but I have my label here. What I do is just take um, those popsicle sticks after I put the onions in and just mix it up a little bit and what that do is just make sure that they're covered on the soil. Uh, onions do, all these plants, they they love the sunlight so I think Duana just asked do they require a lot of sunlight. I'm working on spring gardens so spring and summer crops they do require a lot of sunlight and that's why I have when I'm doing these seed starts I have that light up here and really plants they just need that red and blue light so if you buy one of those plant grow lights you'll have enough light to get them to germinate as well as to grow into nice seedlings and then you can transplant them into your garden now when plants actually grow certain leaves it's uh, like you have your collagen leaves which are the first two leaves but when they start growing your true leaf then the plant can actually use the sun for food so when you start seeing your plants grow leaves, then you know you need to get them uh, used to the sun outside. And I'll go over that in a future video. I even will show you how these are doing in the future, but that's really it. I take, the last step is I take that label and I go ahead and I put them, normally I put them to the end like this. So when I put it into the tray, it's pretty clear of what it is. And I'm not guessing in the future of what I planted there. So, oh, I'm gonna put it right there. See, so that's one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I do my lettuce. 
So I'm gonna move my next tray over and lettuce. And again, I get my lettuce seeds from the rest of the garden. So this is red salad bowl lettuce. And I like how he, uh, when he grows his on YouTube, he also share um, some of the seeds that he's grown. So he actually takes the seeds and prepare uh, them uh, on his seed shop, sells them, and they last a long time. So lettuce, you don't have to uh, thin these out a lot. Um, I'm just gonna put a few uh, in there. They like to grow close together. It's okay to let them grow close together. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some of the lettuce in, and I'm gonna thin it out. So uh, if you overthink it, it'll take you a long time just to get them in the tray. So the goal is just to get them planted. So you can see that I got them in there. And with lettuce, I like to do two trays. So I'm gonna do a couple of trays of these because lettuce is a go-to item. And if you really notice and you eat lettuce that are in some of the other um, grocery stores, you'll notice that it doesn't have that flavor. So that kind of converted me over to wanting more <laughs> lettuce um, because you it's expensive to get like that really good lettuce. Normally it tastes watered down, um, but it's a total difference when you grow lettuce in the back and then um, actually eat fresh lettuce that you just harvested uh, has a totally different flavor and you actually eat your greens so I got two trays of those I'm gonna go ahead and get my label here so and again I'm only doing mainly lettuce and my herbs now things that I know that are not uh, you know gonna outgrow because it's not we're still in the winter still early uh, for some of these so but lettuce you know I want to get it started so I have my label here so this is my label maybe in the future I get a better camera but you can see again I write the name of it and the date that I started it and the reason why is I can look at this the seed package and I can begin to see if I ever come in weeks later I know when I planted it and it lets me know when I need to possibly transplant uh, these so and another step that I always do again lettuce doesn't have to be heavily under but you just want to make sure that they're in contact with the soil because lettuce um, they love the light they grow even when it's just on top of the soil so I'm just making sure that they're in contact with the soil and with lettuce you know again they like to grow uh, and uh, together not too many, I can always thin these out, but the goal, again, is just to get some stuff growing so that we're good to go. So um, I'm gonna put the rest of these seeds up here in my hand. So lettuce is good. Another thing I'm gonna grow is some cilantro. So we're gonna do cilantro next. Uh, cilantro is really important for me and my wife. We like to cook uh, uh, plant-based enchiladas. Now she's been eating plant-based that's why I'm dedicating this video to her and I'm going to start this garden and make sure we get some success going so that uh, I can start supporting uh, her meal plan. But um, one thing that I think was really good is she does these plant-based enchiladas and cilantro is a key ingredient. So I'm going to take the cilantro seed and then this is just some cilantro um, seeds that I bought and you can always look at the back of the label see when you can plant them but cilantro you can grow indoors you can grow outdoors it's always good and the seeds um, let me show you what they look like they look like coriander so also coriander seed coriander and cilantro basically the same thing so if you look at the seeds you can see that they're growing I mean that they're similar to coriander when you get that seasoning so what i'm gonna do with these though i'm only going to put two seeds in each one of them so that's more of a shell so i'm gonna do two seeds in each one of them and these i'm gonna let grow and 
I may thin them out, but I may not. I'm not sure if you should thin these or not. I should really look at that. Because normally you can grow a lot of these together. A lot of herbs you can just overseed and you can, you know, separate later. But um, these, some of these, uh, I do have cilantro that I grew last year and it was a lot of it. So I did save the seeds. One thing I like about cilantro is when they bolt and start going into seedling, I mean, to, uh, to seeding, they'll have a lot of seeds and it'll last you literally you know a year or two so with these I'm gonna just make sure that they're under the soil and again these seed trays and everything is all by design I like smaller trays I don't like them big trays that have a lot of cells in them because it's just easier to manage when you can do one thing at a time and do one plant at a time so so we'll make sure that these are a little bit under the soil here and everything is much is manageable. I'm very busy. I do a lot of work. I work in software engineering, uh, managing developers. So it's you know 18 hour days. Um, so I don't have a lot of time. So if I'm able to do it, you're definitely able to do it. Um, but again, put the label up in front. You make sure that these seeds are a little bit under. And we'll check those out. Uh, also, these seed packets let you know how long it takes to germinate. And that's why I, I put more seeds in, especially on other plants. Like I may do some sugar snaps because I want more sugar snaps while it's still cool as some grow during the spring. Uh, but um, some plants, some seeds delay in growing. So you don't want a cell that doesn't have anything uh, in there. Uh, and sometimes a seed may not germinate at all. And uh, you want to make sure that you know, when you're seeding that it's worth your time. So that's the goal of having multiple um, seeds in each tray because some seeds may not grow, some seeds may grow. So I'm gonna do some sugar snap peas. In other words, they're called sugar and. Um, really like these. And these are big seeds. And when you got seeds like this, you don't want to throw a lot of them in there, so so I'm going to just do two seeds in each cell, and maybe that will yield some some good germination there. How you doing, Doc? All right, and then sugar snap peas. I may do some cooking videos of what I'm doing with this food. I used to cook in Louisiana. Got a lot of Cajun and Creole, but I'm gonna start sharpening my cooking skills toward um, cooking healthier dishes. And I may show you what I may do with the greens that I showed earlier and the uh, Swiss chard. So, and when I grow these sugar and peas, I'm gonna definitely uh, take it to the next level. I like cooking these. I remember we did have some dishes that had this. The thing about sugar snap peas is it grows on a pot and you can just eat them straight off of the vine and you don't have to um, take them out of the pot. You can just bite uh, directly into the pot and you're good to go. So, um, and also with certain dishes that give that nice crisp to it. So it's pretty cool. Now with these, I want to make sure that I get these into the soil. So I'm going to be a little more deliberate in pushing these down into the soil. And this will be the last one that I'm doing. And I'm going to let you all go. But Donna says she's loved them. I do too. They're really good. I haven't had any fresh sugar snap peas in a long time. Also, I've been tempted to eat the pea shoots that is on... Uh, the, the one, the plant that I showed you, the sugar snap peas that's growing in the garden, which I showed you earlier in this video. Uh, the pea shoots, you can just take those very uh, small tips on there and they taste just like sugar snap peas. So, gotta fight the temptation because if I eat too many pea shoots, I won't have any anything left to grow. So, so the goal is to get these into the soil. So, I got these going down into the soil and... What I'm going to do is put my label on it, 
And that is how it works. Put your label on and then you see it right there. And then you basically make sure you put it into the seed tray, which the seed tray is right here. So sorry, <laughs> got the clip on, but that's really it. That's the method that I use for indoor seeding. Got the dates in and what I do with this tray is what some people ask. Now the reason why I do the tray is I don't pour water on top of them because you pour water on top of them. You're basically just washing and moving the seeds. So what I do is just pour water. Now when I plant them just now, the soil is wet, so I'm not going to do that now. But when I come back out a few days, you may notice that it goes from a dark brown to a light brown. You can just pour the water maybe just halfway up the tray. And then, of course, you let the soil absorb the water and then it start watering the root system, which also is good because water being underneath is better because the roots begin to stretch down and you have a really good root system. So that's very important when you're having uh, uh, plants that you're going to transplant. It's good to have a good root system because you can transfer them without them uh, being too weak. So that is it for the day. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you ever want to start a garden, I advise you start right away. Let me know uh, what you want to grow. Let me know, um, you know, send me a video, do a video um, about you getting started. Let me know what plants you're trying to grow. I'm still a beginner at it, but I really adopted a lot within a year. Last year, um, some family members gave me a birthday gift to get started, and I decided to just get started. And it's almost been a year, and, you know, this is how far I've come. Full-blown garden, it kind of manages itself after you get your routine down. But sooner or later, I'm going to show you how I harvest and start cropping some of the vegetables and cook. So I know that you're going to want to look at some of those. So till I see you all next time.